Hello fellow Scratchers! Welcome back to part 6 of our coding and RPG series in Scratch. Today we are going to be moving into new dimensions as we expand our tile base levels not to one, not two, but three layers of tiles. Or if you include the background texture too. This is important, so that we can give our level texture and density, making our level designs look far more impressive. But what's more, our third layer is to be special, as it will be layered on top of the player sprite. This means we can finally walk behind larger game assets and everything really starts to fall into place. I've been so excited to get us to this point, and I know from your comments you have too. So please, if you are, then do hit the like button under these videos to try to get the word out and help keep this series going. Okay, so we pick up from where we left off in episode 5, but take a moment to save this as a new copy, but this is episode 6. Let's get scratching! Before though we can begin painting multi-layered levels, we need a way to store that level. Our grid list is currently storing a simple 2D grid of tiles. In theory we just need to add two more of these on top. So what? Two new lists? <laughs> that could work, but coding it would be more difficult as we'd be forever referring to multiple lists. So instead, we'll simply tack each grid layer onto the end of the previous one, creating one single huge level list. The indexes into the list are still quite simple to use. The first tile in our level is tile index number 1. To get to the tile above it, we add to this the number of tiles in a row, G max, if you remember. So it's logical that to get to the next grid layer above, we would now add the count of tiles in a whole grid layer, and that is G max multiplied by G max. We will therefore store this value in a variable named grid multiplier, or G mul for short. So let's do this. We'll begin by clicking into the level store sprite. We need to calculate the G max multiplied by G max. In our case that's 10,000 tiles, quite large, and we should be able to confirm this does match the number of rows in our grid list. Yep, 10,000 items. Create a new variable, naming it G mul, making it for all sprites. And we'll set G mul to G max multiplied by G max. Now please click this script so that G mul variable gets set. There we go, 10,000. So to add the extra two layers to our existing levels, we repeat for two layers multiplied by G mul. And we add the empty value to grid. That should be 20,000 empty items appended to the end of our grid list. Shall we test that? Currently we are in 10,000 rows, and after clicking this repeat script, now we have 30,000 items. Wonderful! And yes, they are all empty rows. That fixes up our lists. Now we should make sure any future level lists are also set up correctly. Find our define new map script, and after it has generated our simple single layer level, drop this repeat onto the end, like so, and that will bring it up to the full three layers too. The set gmul, that can be dropped in after the set gmax. Awesome, that's the setup done. Now to handle the drawing of the new layers. Click into the tile sprite, and find the define paint script. This script is responsible for stamping one screen of tiles from our level grid. We want to extend this to allow us to stamp a further layer of tiles on top. So click to edit the custom block and rename it Paint Layer, with a new input of Layer Number. Now if we scroll up to the When I Receive Paint Background script, we can now enter a layer number of 1 in this first paint layer block, as that will be the first layer of tiles in our grid list. But then, right afterwards, duplicate the paint layer block, and we'll follow it up with a paint layer 2 as well, right on top of the first layer of tiles. Ok, but not to get carried away, we haven't yet scripted how the layer input is to work. So back into the define paint layer script. 
split off these scripts under the change GIDX block. GIDX, or grid index, represents the item number of the tile in our grid list. We just need to adjust this for the specified layer number. If you remember, we have the variable gmul that records how many items are in each layer, so we just need to multiply these together. Except we first should subtract 1 from the layer number since layer 1 wants to begin at the very start, not a whole layer into the list. So that's layer number subtract 1, all multiplied by gmul. And we drop that into the change GIDX block like so. Cool, that's that. And that should now be stamping both our tile layers. Of course, testing that out is a little more tricky since we don't yet have any tiles in our second layer. But you should at least be able to confirm that things are still looking okay as they are. So, to add tiles to another layer, we need to know which layer we are painting to. Make a new variable named layer for all sprites. We want to see this layer number when using the level editor. So find the when zero key press script and where we previously hid the editor variable, switch this to hide the layer variable. And below that, also show the layer variable. Just make sure to remember to actually hide the editor variable if it was left showing, like mine was. There, this variable reporter is just as good an indicator that we are editing the level as the other reporter was, and this one is also functional. Now, to let us switch layers, I'm going to use the number keys 1, 2, and 3 for this. So I'll just make some space for the new scripts. Now, when one key is pressed. Let's make a new custom block. Set layer with an input of layer number, and when the one key is pressed, we use the set layer to one. Now we can duplicate that again for the number two key, setting layer to two. And for the three key, setting layer to, yes, you guessed it, three. Right, the define set layer script. We'll start with a check. If editor is greater than zero, just to make sure we are in the editor. And then simply set the layer variable to the layer number input. Great, let's test that worked. Smash the green flag and check that when the level editor is open, you can indeed press numbers 1, 2, and 3 to get the layer variable to change value. Splendid, now we just need to extend the block placement to actually place on that specified layer. Right, the scripts that place new tiles with the mouse is under the define paint editor script. Scrolling down, and here under the if mouse down, we are indeed replacing tiles in the grid. We have that GIDX again, so all we need to do is account for the current layer number. But we are using GIDX twice here, once for placing the blocks and again for that E key tile picker. I don't want to write this maths twice, but also we mustn't change the GIDX variable itself. So let's make a new variable, name it TMP temp, to store temporary calculations, making it for this sprite only. Before the if mouse down, set TMP to our GIDX. And then we can carefully replace the two following GIDX variables with these new TMP variables instead, since they are now the same value. Cool, because now we are free to do the layer offsetting to this temp variable. We need a layer and subtract from that one as before. And then we multiply this by g mul, the size of our layer. Lastly, we add this to GIDX and pop it back into the set temp block. Oh gosh, wow, how good are you feeling about this? In theory, we are now ready to replace tiles in any layer and have coded up the stamping of the first two layers too, so poke that green flag and let's take a gander. So I've entered layer 2, and I've got the top of a tree as my brush costume, 
I'm going to try and place it right over this pathway. So what do you think? Will this all come together and work? Click. Yes, oh yes, we've only gone and done it. You can clearly see the previous tile still sat behind the top of this tree tile, so I am pleased about that. And I'll just finish off the rest of that tree now. Yes, that's dead exciting, isn't it? Now, question, why can't I delete this right-hand portion of the tree? Uh, it's because I'm still editing layer 2, you see, and this tree was drawn on layer 1, of course, so press the 1 key to switch to layer 1, and now, with a blank costume selected, using that E key, I can delete this tree too. Of course, having done so, it would actually have been better to remove the whole tree across off the path. So back to layer 2, and I'll redraw this tree one tile up to the right, and then remove the left-hand tiles. There. Looking nice, guys. Layer 1 and 2 work excellently. But hold the phone, something is not quite right. Should I really be able to walk right on top of this treetop? It would make more sense if that was drawn on top of my player, right? Indeed, and this is the whole purpose of layer 3. Our third layer is to be drawn above or in front of the player, giving that illusion of depth. Only problem is, our level is stamped, and the player is just a sprite, no stamping involved, and as such, can never appear behind the level. Hmm, unless we stamp the player too. Okay, if we look over here in the paint background script, this is where the layer 1 and 2 are stamped, and we will need to stamp the player right after this, before we then go on to stamp layer 3. To do this, we need to click into the player sprite. Find the main game loop. When I receive start game loop. The scripts are running in this order. Play your movement, paint the background, and then paint the player. Ha! It has the right name, paint player. But if we check out the scripts, it's only positioning and not stamping. But no problem, we just drop in a stamp block at the end. But don't forget that the player sprite is still showing, so to tidy this all up, under the when green flag clicked script, drop in a hide block. Perfect! Let's give that a test to see if the player sprite is stamping correctly above layers 1 and 2. Sweet! Yes it is! Looks just the same as before. Now we just need to paint that third layer after stamping the player. Find the main game loop once more, and we need a new broadcast after painting the player. Broadcasting the message, paint, layer 3. Can you guess what this is meant to do? I wonder how many of you could complete the scripts for painting layer 3 without me. Feel free to stop the video and see if you can. Drop me a message in the comments if you did manage it. But here we go. Click into the tile sprite. We are going to need a new when I receive event hat block for the paint layer 3 event. And what we do is just paint layer 3, of course. Now that in itself is almost enough, except when the level editor is open. We really want that to all draw after the main level finishes drawing. So grab the scripts from the set focus palette block above and move them over into the paint layer 3 script. Nice, okay, so in theory, gosh the excitement is palpable, I'm switching to layer 3 now. No wait, I need to remove the top of the tree, so back to layer 2, and then press E over some empty space and draw over the old tree to remove it, then back to layer 3, and draw the top back in. Yes, it's drawing, which is a very good sign, but is it in front of the player? Careful does it. Oh guys, yes, that is so beautiful, isn't it? What a change. Now we can go behind and in front of these tiles. So good. Of course, without collision detection, we can still pass through the middle. But hey, one thing at a time, right? Come on, I just have to try this out on a larger house. The whole top section of this should now be transitioned into layer 3. Oh wait, it's not even on layer 2, this is a layer 1 house at the moment, so remove it from there. And then on layer 3, draw the house back in with our magic space key feature. Still loving that. 
Here we go, taking a stroll. Oh, simply awesome. If you are seeing these results in your project too, then kudos to you, you've done a great job. We all can have a lot of fun making our levels look and feel super awesome from here on, like creating this awesome stone temple, complete with doorway, grassy roof, fence, ladder, or whatever else you feel like adding. Looks so good, doesn't it? Now, just before we conclude this episode, one thing that gets a little tricky now that we have multiple layers of tiles is knowing which tiles you placed on which layers. So to avoid confusion, how about we add an option to fade out the layers you are not working on, a so-called onion skin mode. So still on the tile sprite, under the when flag clicked, we'll make a new variable onion mode for all sprites. Then set onion mode to zero when the game starts up. Now to be extra safe, under the when zero key press script, whenever we enter or exit the level designer, let's also set onion mode back to zero, turning this mode off. We don't want to keep it enabled when playing the game. Now we could introduce a new key press to toggle the onion skin mode on and off, but how about we combine it with the already defined number keys one, two, and three. At present, when we press a layer number key, we call the set layer here. If we happen to press the same layer number twice, then we simply stay on the same layer. But perhaps we could use multiple presses to toggle the onion skinning on and off instead. For this, we need an if else block, checking whether the current layer is already equal to the requested layer number. Well then, if that isn't the case, then we want to set layer to the new layer number as before. So that goes in the else. But if this is the same layer number again, let's toggle the onion mode instead by setting onion mode to the result of subtracting from one onion mode. That will toggle the mode from zero to one and back to zero again. Let's just sanity check that by running the project with the level editor open and we are on layer one already, so pressing number one again, and woo, the onion mode has toggled to one and back to zero with each subsequent press. Now press number two to get to layer two and press two again. And yes, this is working just as we hoped. Okay, cool, so let's get this working. Find the define paint layer script and we'll pop in an if block right at the top. We simply want to check whether onion mode is greater than zero. If it is, then great, we want to fade away all but the current layer of tiles. So not layer equals layer number. So if we are painting an onion skinned layer, one other than the current layer, then set ghost effect to fade this nicely out to something like 80. Feel free to play with that value to find what you like the most. Now, just before we try that out, scroll down to the bottom of the script and we must ensure we set the ghost effect back to zero at the end. Otherwise, the next tiles to be stamped will continue to be faded out and we don't want that. So run the project now. And clicking one again to enter the onion skin mode on layer one. And look, there's our first layer tiles showing up ghosted. This lamppost is on layers two and three, I expect. If I press two to edit layer two, there we go. Now layer one tiles fade away and we can clearly see the layer two tiles. How about layer three? <laughs> yep, there they are. That's so cool and will really help us when editing more complex level regions. What you might note though, is that the background grass texture doesn't yet fade away and we really need that to do the same. So click with me into the background sprite. We've not been in here for a while, have we? Before we stamp the background, we want an if else block so that we again can check if the onion mode is enabled. That is, it's greater than zero. If it is, then we want to draw a faded out version of our grass texture. To do that, we'll first erase all from the pen category to clear the screen to pure white, and then set ghost effect as before to 80%, before our script goes on to stamp the background. 
this time faded out. Then we just need to account for when we are not in onion mode, and we set ghost effect to zero. Fantastic! That should do the job. Shall we check it out? Smash that green flag. Let's turn on onion skinning mode. Oh yes, there we go. Now everything except layer 2 tiles are ghosted, including that background. We should now be able to view layer 1. Yep, without the background, which is good news for helping us to build our level and know where our tiles really are. If we check out the houses, you can now clearly see where tiles are at the bottom, which tiles are on layer 2, just this corner tile for me. And of course, layer 3 that draws in front of the player. Well, excellent, that neatly brings us to the end of another highly productive episode. If you're enjoying this series, then please smash the like button now and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so as not to miss the next exciting episode. I wonder what we'll cover next? I'm thinking that we should perhaps start to think about collision detection? What do you think? It's quite a biggie, but it feels like it's the natural next step. Okay, well that's it from me today. Do have a great week ahead and scratch on guys. <laughs> <laughs>